Because that's not a real one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to make record. this available in the Discord backstage. That's a good idea. Hey, at least got us one. All right. So I am recording right now, Tom. So whenever you right. are ready. Three. Sorry. Three, two. Coming up. Spoiler. Everything that will happen in 2020. Welcome to our end of year daily tech news show 2020 predictions episode from Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. We are joined by a cast of amazing prognosticators today, uh, starting with Mr. Scott Johnson. How are you feeling about 2020? Pretty good. It's supposed to be that year we get everything, Tom. So I'm hoping my predictions fit into the everything category. Mm-hmm. That's right. We've been anticipating this for five years now because everything was coming in 2020. <laughs> yep. Big year. Uh, for that. Very much looking forward. Also joining us, Jen Cutter back on the show. Welcome back, Jen. Hello, it's good to be here. 2020 should be really interesting for gaming. All mm, kinds of gaming. I can't wait to hear your predictions. Uh, Shannon Morse also joining us from ThreatWire. How's it going, Shannon? Great. I am so excited to chat about the new decade. <gasps> and from NoSillaCast, Allison Sheridan. Hello. Now, I'm, I'm figuring I'm going to crash and burn since I did so well in 2019, 2020. I'm looking for <laughs> right, zero. You have a record to defend. That's, that's a really good point. All right. Well, let's uh, let's waste no more time. The year is not young. Uh, we only have a little bit of 2019 left. So let's get right to the predictions. Sarah Lane, would you do us the honor of starting us off? I will. My first prediction is actually based on a recent DTNS show where we, uh, and Scott, you were a guest on the show that day, mm -hmm. uh, w where we unpacked the idea of deep fakes and how much we should be afraid of them, how good they are now, how they work, and how they're going to get a lot better in the future, and if everyone should freak out. And I had mentioned, we didn't really talk about it on the show so much, but I had mentioned to the guys as we were all prepping for the show, you know, we're going to get to the point where it is so good that somebody's got to take somebody to court because they'll be like, it wasn't me in the video. And the person will say, yeah, it was. And then you're going to have to have a team of experts come in and figure out if that deep fake is really that person or if they're just lying. And so I think 2020 is going to be the year where we see the big first court case on this subject. So this the court case won't be about the deep fake so much necessarily, right? It will be a pivotal part where 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 the court will the, have to determine whether the video is real or not. Exactly, to determine yeah. if that person really did this thing that was unbecoming or perhaps mm -hmm. even illegal. Well, there's a whole right. there's also a whole new potential of libel cases that could come out of deep fakes as they continue to permeate. So, I was thinking about this earlier if more and more people have their faces put on bodies that are not theirs, doing things they don't want to be seen doing. Uh, my expectation would be more people are going to try to go after that in some way. It'll be hard to know who to go after because often this happens in the dark and no one knows who does it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I think so. That, but that would not be your prediction, Sarah. Your prediction is that the court will have to determine whether something's real or not. There won't be a, this is a definitely fake and I'm going after the person that made it. No, this is no one knows if this is real or not. We have two uh, sides of the we story. Have, we have one side saying, no, this is this is an actual video proving that they you yeah, know, murdered you, the is, bird. This is you. And the person <laughs> yeah. saying, no, it isn't. And then uh, a team of experts are going to have to come in and unpack this video and figure out, you know, if there are ways to to determine whether or not wh who's lying here. Yeah. Well, I guess it's going to believe really him the in the end. In the video. Well, well. It's, You're this gonna, is a good, we're going to have to, you know, this we're going to have prediction. to figure this out. This is a good prediction because it's not about how good the deep fake is. It's about having to, someone thinking they can convince a court that it's real when it's not, or maybe the person got convinced it was real when it's not. It's about uh, bringing it to a judge and a jury and having mm -hmm. them decide. Yeah. yeah. And, and That's yeah, a and, good and, one. and how this evidence gets entered into court and, and where, where it all goes. All right. So that's my first prediction. Um, and thank you for saying it's a good one. <laughs> I've got deep fakes <laughs> on my mind these days. I don't know. It's one of my things. Uh, my second prediction is we're finally going to see a smart display eyeglass product, some AR display product, and people will be surprised and delighted by it. So Google Glass is always thrown out there as, you know, the 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 
the gadget before its time that ultimately did not work. Uh, we've got Snap Spectacles, niche product, too expensive for a lot of people, and still not exactly something that a lot of people want to wear. It's kind of, you know, it's it, they're, they're getting their footing, but I would not call that a hit. Um, and we're on version three at this point and kind of hard to know where the company's going with that. We have rumors that Apple is hard at work on its own version of AR glasses. Uh, Apple known for design. There are a lot of mock-ups that you see on the internet that are all just, you know, what people think it might look like and they all look horrible. So I'm not saying that it, Apple's product would look horrible. And I'm not saying that Apple's going to be the company that does this in 2020 as well. But I think we're going to see something that turns the tides. You think like a ma a product that's good enough that it, it can... It, it just becomes something that normal people are wearing. You gotcha. know, like mm. instead of like, oh, yeah, you're the ooh, AR glasses. Interesting. What are they like? You know, okay, smart, so smart watches were like this a couple of years ago. Now it's it's hard for the course. Yeah. So how how do we measure success? Is it like... There First is, year Apple Watch wearing? Is it AirPod wearing? Like what sales volumes? What? Yeah, Could be. I guess I guess probably. Yeah. How, yeah how what sales volume there? does it have to hit to be considered surprising and delighting? To me, to me, the the parallel or the the thing you would talk about that's sort of like this is VR and where it is, and you could argue that it's behind some predictions and ahead of others. But um, I think the day that this becomes like watches or other smart devices that we don't really talk about anymore and they just sort of accepted is when they stop looking like goofy goggles and start looking like you just have a pair of glasses. Well, and I think the <laughs> point that, that, you know, I was trying to make is that we're getting there. We're starting to see companies and sometimes there are products where you're like, what's this company? I don't know. I'm probably not going to buy these glasses. I don't know this ecosystem all that well, but they don't look that bad. They don't look that weird. I think we weird. could measure it. We could measure it by uh, at least one DTNS listener sees someone in the wild wearing them in a, a state in the middle of the United States, or maybe Jen sees somebody in Canada, right? Not on the East or West Coast. That doesn't <laughs> I think count. that's already happening. Well, for me, like my measure of that would be if people can wear these in public and not get made fun of like immediately, because we all remember what uh, what the Google Glass people were called when they were out walking about. That yes. would not be publicly accepted. So if this actually did delight people, then you could wear it out and be cool and not laughed at. I like this. I actually had a similar prediction on my mind. It's not one of the predictions I was going to make that the, we'd get the first mainstream successful augmented reality device. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm with you, Sarah. I just I want to make sure that we can give you credit for it when you, as we know, you will be when you're right at the end of the sure. show. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you say device. I say that device will be glasses. Also, yeah. seems um, like it seems like 2020 is a good year for these to happen in a bigger way. And I, I, third quick one? I, yes, we, I know we're only doing two, but because we're all here, my third is that baby Yoda will get a plushie and it will become the hottest selling toy of all time. Oh, Sarah wins <laughs> right there. Time, <laughs> <laughs> Where can I get it? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, people will still like baby Yoda in 2020 is another way of phrasing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I guess I guess I would I would say you could say well, there's like BB Yoda stuff all over the place. It will be some sort of official toy that's like the cool product that kids have to have. Yeah, they have some official Baby Yoda stuff out already, but I guess I haven't seen a plushie no, yet. No, so much. you're calling the new Tickle Me Elmo is Baby Yoda. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and he goes and his ears move. Force so. Tickle Me Yoda. Yeah, this is, that's that's my little bonus prediction since we're all here. That doesn't sound Force Tickle. Me. All right, uh, Scott Johnson, let's move to your predictions. Force tickles will become a thing. No, that's no. not my prediction. Oh, don't remind me I said <laughs> we it. We already got rid of force touch. That's right. No force tickles. Oh, uh, no. For, uh, mine's, uh, uh, I don't know, sort of like uh, uh, what Sarah said earlier about AR. I'm going to make a prediction about VR. Since VR is, you know, here, it is a market. It's happening, and we're seeing growth in it, finally. Um, mostly on the back of what Oculus is doing, in particular the Quest, I think 2020 is the year they have a smaller, thinner, faster, lighter Quest 2.0 or Quest 2 or something in that vein that will be even better at the hand tracking they just introduced, that will still tether to PCs if people want to play that way, uh, that it will be a device that will uh, continue to push VR forward in a way that uh, that makes it giant 
uh, dent in that market. Like everybody else will be playing catch up to whatever the follow up to the quest uh, quest is. And the only thing, my other prediction is the only thing that holds them back will be that Facebook's name's associated with it, and that will that'll tick some people off and push them away. <laughs> well, but okay. otherwise, so, so your your prediction is that we'll get a smaller, faster quest too, because yes. it would be really unlikely if Oculus uh, market share declined. Uh, that that's that would be that that would be the bold prediction to say it's going to decline because it's been growing pretty steadily. And to say that people will still be mad at Facebook in 2020 <laughs> seems like a pretty safe <laughs> prediction too. Uh, so I like, but I, but I like this. You you you've got a, a, a solid bedrock here. I'm just pa I'm padding it out. But honestly, I I really do think <laughs> that they'll follow up with something more. I think that that this will force them to do things like address the fact that they've sold devices with promises that they can't keep and the quest ended up being sort of the the smart purchase in other words people who bought rift s's uh, are ticked right now they're mad because a quest basically acts like a rift s now and it does it without any additional cost other than a new cable to run thunderbolt 3 from your uh, headset to a usb th uh, usb 3 point uh, port on your pc and there are people who are really mad about that because they paid the same amount of money and they don't have the versatility now. People with the Go, uh, they're just mad because they bought a Go. But in the end, I think that uh, despite how they handle that or how they do things marketing-wise, I think that they'll continue to grow, be strong, and that the Quest 2 will be out next year. Jen Cutter, what do you think? Uh, I I think it's a great prediction. Um, my main points about it are totally sideways to the prediction. It's like, I just want these things to be affordable because I want to play Beat Saber. That's that's all I want. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're all they're all right now kind of VR art. They're just Beat Saber devices. Seriously. like And racing games. But yeah, racing those, those games two things. But Beat, Beat Saber is such a killer app. And it's really the first killer app I can name for VR, especially in gaming, uh, that it's hard to think of having a VR headset that doesn't play Beat Saber because you would need at least that base experience before you do anything else. So I also hope 2020 has more stuff in store uh, that can maybe challenge that. But yes, you're not wrong. These are Beat Saber playing devices <laughs> currently. Um, my second prediction is that is a specific one to Sony and their relationship to Microsoft. But in specific, Sony will have a very strong launch for the PS5 but they are going to be forced in 2020 to ramp up their services plans. They need to have better streaming solutions to counteract xCloud, and they need to be able to compete better with Microsoft for other services like Game Pass and other things. So the prediction, in short, is Sony and PlayStation as a brand, despite their leadership role right now, uh, need to look at this next generation and 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 look at it hard because Microsoft's coming with all guns blazing. I think that they're going to release services that rival Microsoft's xCloud for streaming and rival Microsoft's uh, Game Pass for just general accessibility of games across multiple platforms, meaning PC, PlayStation, possibly other platforms. Uh, despite being in a leadership position, uh, position 2020 is the year they open up uh, because the industry is going to sort of go on without them if they don't. So hopefully that's so. Sort of so concise. your prediction, the 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 part of your prediction that we can judge is, uh, did they release new versions of services that rival X Cloud and Game Pass? Sounds yes. Like. So yeah. for example, and this one it's a little nebulous, I admit, but but they, you know, when it comes to Game Pass, for example, Game Pass is arguably the best value in gaming, and again, it's arguable. So someone could argue it's not, but. Uh, my, my, or Sony just doesn't have an answer for it. What Sony's big answer is we have amazing first party titles and they're world class and they're the best there are. And that's all true. But I don't think it's going to be enough in this next generation. Ironically, the kinds of services that Microsoft is aiming to, to serve up and Stadia to some degree is offering to serve up are the kinds of things we all made fun of them last generation for for announcing with Xbox One early on. And it's the reason Sony got a bit of a head start. Everybody ripped on Microsoft for their ideas. It turns out we're kind of moving into that area now in a more natural way, maybe at the right time. But I think Sony has to do more to compete with it. So this will be the year that I think Sony starts to announce big services changes to rival what Microsoft has planned. Yeah. Oh, That's and also, a, I, oh go ahead. No, I'm just going to give you 
plot it. It just sounds like a good prediction. What were you going to say? Uh, all I was going to say is my third one that Roger won't keep is just that we can all get permanent tattoos that we can remove just as easily. So they're not really permanent. That's a new tech thing <laughs> I can see happen in 2020. So and in other words, they don't fade away unless you want them to. Yes. It'll be digital of, of mm-hmm. some kind of digital thing. You'll stick your arm in a machine. It'll go, oh, bloop, okay. bloop, 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 leave you the tattoo you want. And then six months later, you're like, I'm sick of this design. You go back in, it erases it, puts something new, not lasers, not painful. That was going to be a forecast prediction on Current Geek, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, honestly, it could be, uh, but I, I held it for this. But I, And that one actually is a little closer than people think. I saw a documentary where they were showing a similar oh, cool. technology. So I actually think it's possible, but it's also super dumb. Um, but if I'm ever getting a tattoo, this is how it'll happen. All right, Jen Cutter, uh, I imagine that your predictions might be in the gaming realm, might they? They are. I'm actually going to start with esports because that's kind of – the big thing that I want to talk about. Uh, I was going to make a joke and say that 2020 is the year that mainstream media finally spells esports correctly, but uh, <laughs> that would die a horrible death on day two. So that is my joke prediction. No, my actual prediction is that 2020 is the year where everyone's, especially investors and sponsors, start deeply questioning their ROI. Ah, the shakeout. There, yeah, this is a bubble. This can't last. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the year it all starts happening. It's going to be a huge contraction, if not a complete blow up. Uh, But for what I mean specifically for the people who aren't into esports, let's say you're running a team. Okay, great. So now you need your franchise slot. So that's $20 million usually. Uh, That's before your player salaries. That's before your streaming house. That's before all your kit, all your support staff, and all of the travel because you're going all around the world all year long. And then for the sponsors. Okay, great. So you are giving these teams the gear. You're like helping subsidize their travel or, you know, got their jerseys and everything. So you're putting them in front of all of these streams where there are millions and millions of people watching. But what are you getting back? Are you making enough in terms of brand goodwill? Is this worth it to you versus just having a commercial or like teaming up with Razor or any kind of company to just do a different kind of product to just blanket yourself on Twitch and be on everybody's channels instead of the one tiny little esports area? So this year in 2019, we had Echo Fox end. This year in 2019, we also had Astralis go public. It's the first esports team that had an IPO. It only happened in Denmark, but it still happened. So 2020, I think we're going we're gonna to lose a lot of events. We're going to see teams collapse. We're going to see these giant events not be maybe as giant as they were in the past when people realize that there's not as much money here that's real as they want it to be. It's just all inflation. I think Jen is 100% right on this, by the way. Just going to throw a vote behind this prediction. If I've I've heard a prediction today that I think will come the most true, it will be the scaling back of esports and how much money people are willing to spend on it because we got ahead of ourselves. We're too far out. Dial it back. There's still potential. There's still growth. But I think we got too quick, too much, uh, which means too much money, which means people are losing money, which means we're going to see it scale back. I totally agree. So we need to see events that get big events that that get canceled teams consolidating leagues ending stuff like that yes like the like dota 2 the international that is still probably going to break records next year i'm not worried about those kind of events i think like uh the counter-strike tour will get smaller i think the capcom pro tour is they've already kind of announced that it's going to be different and in two halves and like some things that were majors aren't majors anymore and uh, you're going to see that kind of slow consolidation and you might just see a league go full on belly up next year, right in the middle, mm-hmm. and then everyone's screwed. I think that's a good prediction too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do too. I mean, with social media, you're seeing that with influencers and companies trying to focus more on micro influencers as opposed to major one million plus ones because their return on investment is so much better for micros. So maybe even we'll see smaller, smaller events start popping up as opposed to these large, large, huge investments. Actually, I think that's the key, and I think that's what will drive it further is to keep, bring it back to the community a little bit. No, yeah. don't try to corporatize it immediately and yeah, make exactly. it just four giant companies. Make it grassroots. It, it already was, so let it grow that way and do some amazing things that way. Spread your butter a little bit on this bread instead of having it all in the middle. I, I <laughs> totally agree with that. Yeah, no one wants Without their Vegemite. butter all in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spread it around. Nobody wants butter in the middle of your bread. Or Vegemite, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, what's prediction number two, Jen? Uh, prediction number two is actually Google Stadia related. 
I don't like the stadia. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I'm kind. This is my walking out on a limb prediction here. I think that next year, Google is first of all going to finish the features they promised because they kind of launched with some of them, but not all of them. And I think next year, they're going to come out with a new feature that they haven't talked about yet. Not at all. It'll be a complete surprise to everybody. And it will be a legit new feature, not just a new way to ruin software ownership. It'll be something so good that Microsoft and Sony will want to find a way to copy it and cram it into mm. their future services. That and is then my right prediction. before the end of the year, they're going to drop it completely because they'll forget about it, right? <laughs> yeah, it'll go, go the way of, uh, what was it, Wave? Google Plus. Google Plus. Reader, <laughs> it Plus, everything. That's a your long favorite. list of bodies there. <laughs> yeah, they're, you're, they have to next year do better because it was really an abysmal launch. What they should have done is just call it a beta. So I think they can I think they can naturally do better yes next year and it'll be a good prediction that they will. I still worry two, three, four years down the road what Stadia looks like. And you know, I'm not, I'm I'm in no rush to get that service. Back. I think this is a very astute prediction that that Google will get Stadia right. Because I think you're right, Scott. This was a beta, whether they called it that or not. And I don't think they have got the product out there that they wanted to have out. And I think it's super smart to predict that they'll have a surprise feature that will turn everyone's heads. Mm -hmm. Like It's just the feature, though. Like Stadia would not work where I'm at. It works on their campus, but I moved like three blocks away from where I used to live. Where I used to live, I couldn't watch Twitch because if you weren't a partner stream with the quality options, all I saw was a slideshow of like sparkles if I was trying to watch Killer Instinct. So it just it doesn't work in Canada. Stadia would not work where I'm here. I can do this show. I can play Destiny 2. Even though I'm paying 120 bucks a month for internet, it's just it's not a global platform. Whereas for my PlayStation, I can plug that in and play wherever. I just have to patch carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and prediction three is Canada gets nationwide broadband. No, Yay. I <laughs> wish. I want PharmaCare first, but I will. Uh, I would also be very happy with broadband. Do you have a quick third one? Uh, yeah, uh, we are proposing a new hate speech law where we remove everything. Uh, off social media within 24 hours when it's reported. There are similar laws around the world, and I am predicting we follow none of them, and our proposal next year ends up being really stupid. We get laughed <laughs> at and walk it back, and then nothing happens <laughs> in the course of next year. We'll just table that for another year. All right, so uh, a hate speech 24-hour removal law uh, gets walked back uh, by the Canadian government. Got it. So that's, that's a very measurable one. We'll be able to tell if that was true or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Shannon Morse, what's going to happen in 2020? Okay, so um, my first prediction, of course, mine are always kind of evolving around and uh, gravitating towards security and privacy, as usual. Uh, the first one is ransomware will evolve and become harder to protect against. And I think that ransomware will still depend on a large scale on phishing tactics, which they have been using, attackers have been using in the past to gain access to networks already to plant ransomware. They use like targeted emails toward employees and hopefully get them to click on links and stuff like that. I think that's going to continue to be a trend, but I also think that we're going to start to see customized ransomware made for specific vectors, which we haven't necessarily seen yet. We've just seen ransomware, which is named something different, but generally all of them work exactly the same, uh, kind of being like floated out to whatever networks they can actually land on and uh, infect. So I think that it's going to evolve to be like implanted specifically for uh, industrial control centers, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and because we will see that evolution, it's going to be a lot harder for uh, security professionals to protect against since we will have to basically change our direction and do a lot of reverse engineering on these different ransomware. Yeah, that especially a lot if of they words. involve fileless attacks somewhere in there uh, yeah. as, as part of the phishing scam. Uh, so it's harder to to get rid of maybe one of the in infection vectors. I mean, they're still going to work at the end the way they always work, which is they encrypt your drive and yeah. you get decrypted. But but how they get there could definitely change. I, th I, th I think that's a, a good possibility. Yeah, so I'm I'm uh, I'm interested to see what happens. I think that it's going to be scary, but we 
I and I think that ransomware is going to continue to build. Uh, we've seen so much of it this past year in 2019. I think we're going to see quite a bit more in 2020 and further down the line. But I definitely think it's going to evolve because right now it's just been like just tons of different ransomware spreading all over the place. Uh, my second one is legitimate hacks on connected election systems, like voting machines, specifically, I'm really focusing on voting machines, will be implemented during the election season. And in this case, we will actually have recorded and investigated uh, problems that we can actually uh, um, uh, focus in on that have actually happened during the election season uh, that will have uh, um, uh, Leo, like law enforcement officers actually investigating into. Uh, so I'm not sure if maybe I'm hitting this prediction a little bit early since like the US elections this uh, time frame doesn't really occur until November of next year. But I think during that time, we're gonna start seeing uh, actual information about real voting machines that people are actually using, not just like the DEF CON voting machine village that is all, mm -hmm. you know, put on standby and is on a enclosed network, but actual ones that are on like a public network that are being hacked actively by, you know, state sponsored attackers or maybe localized attackers. And we will see some investigation into that. Um, now, they don't the, have to be on a public network to count for your prediction, though, right? Not necessarily. Okay. I, I'm just counting anything that is actually used for the elections. So like, like results being changed? Yeah, results being okay. changed. Um, um, ransomware being put on voting machines is entirely possible or machines being um, uh, taken over by uh, an attacker who's just scraping all of the data off of them and not actually changing anything. So it could be anything along okay. those lines. But so far, all we've seen is we, we've heard rumors about election machines being uh, used by attackers. And we've seen this occur at DEF CON's voting machine village in an know they can. <laughs> environment. So we know they can. And we also know that a lot of voting machines have not been updated, even though the US is trying to regulate this. They have not gotten all of the states on board to update all of the machines yet. So we still have a lot of vulnerable machines out there. And I, I, think th I think that attackers are going to take advantage of that. That's part of our superpower, though, is the diversity of the machines. There's every single one seems to be different, all these different systems. <laughs> sure, any one of them can be hacked, but you can't they take can't them get all, them all. At the same yeah. time. Yeah, you uh, can't get them all the, at the same time. I think it's a very important point to point to, to, to repeat what Shannon just said. There have been no attacks on election machines in an election in the United right. States. And I think a lot of people think that's not true. They they think there have been. They they confuse stories in their head and they confuse the the coverage of DEF CON and think, oh yeah, they've they've hacked our elections before. It hasn't happened. This would be a huge deal if there yeah. was any attack. Less on the results, on the results reporting, that that's like defacing a website. Uh, because the results reporting websites if the results themselves are still accurate, that causes confusion. It's not good. But if there is an attack on a voting machine, and my guess would be it would probably be an offline machine because it's actually easier to, to, yeah, it is. to do that. I mean, you could stick uh, a USB rubber ducky in an offline somebody machine Somebody goes into vote, to scrape the rubber app. duckies it. Exactly. Like, I would not be shocked. And uh, there would be the wake-up call that the industry needs to really crack down on the integrity yeah. No matter what party you favor, uh, you you want this to be above reproach, and 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 it it is dangerously close to not being. And this this could be a good thing in a way if it's just mm -hmm. like a single precinct, maybe even a single machine or something like that. Uh, if it if it wakes everybody up to the danger that's out there. Yeah, Tom, I'm unfortunately, glad you made that distinction because a, a friend of mine yesterday, well informed, intelligent friend, said, "No, I believe they really have changed the results in the past." And technically, we have not seen verifiable proof, Ev evidence, like evidence that that yeah. has happened. So that's why I think that next year is going to be a major thing for voting machines. So I'm going to keep an eye on it because that's going to be crazy for Threatwire. <laughs> yeah. um, my... Don't get gleeful about it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
We all want well, you to be I mean, wrong. Like Ed, when Edward Snowden came out about Prism, that was a big thing. And that like totally changed everybody's mindset about security around 2013. So maybe we'll see the same thing happen next year. Um, I had a quick third one, too. And this one probably won't happen. But I'm kind of hopeful that it does because I'm interested in these products. Folding screen phones will go down in price. And we will see one on the market as little as for as little as $1,000. I think this is your, your most... <laughs> probable prediction of the three so? honestly yeah Bec oh, because so. like uh <laughs> somebody like oppo or somebody like that is is going to get in on this game by the end of next year and if they can make it 999 dollars your prediction's right and that's the kind of thing that will catch people's eye absolutely right now this the cheapest we're seeing is uh 1300 or 1399 i forget the exact price it's not um, that far from... it's not that far away yeah, yeah. it's not that far but they, they no, that can't be an old one that drops to a thousand from thirteen hundred, no. right? That has to be no. a new, it has to be right? Something, it has to be a newly released phone. Okay. And it has to be a folding screen, not a dual screen like the LG one that we saw on the market, All but right. an actual folding screen. Very newly precise. Newly released. I'm adding that to your prediction. All right. <laughs> Uh, so Allison cheats and asks uh, her amazingly smart audience to help her make her predictions. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you do that again this year? I did do that again this year. Yeah, they were. So these are all locks. Too. These are definitely going to happen. Totally going to happen. All right. My first one is that Amazon is going to get into wearables with a smart watch. And it's going to have the uh, A-Lady built in, of course. Now, my first thought, would they call would they call it a fire watch? And I thought, you know what? That fire, that's not working so good. So it's going to be called wrist, the yeah. No, the Echo Watch is what I'm thinking. What mm -hmm. do you guys think? Possible. Yeah. yeah Fire yeah, Watch. It's possible. Fire Watch is a video game I played. I literally played it. <laughs> like a it also just game. sounds it sounds dangerous. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're but, watching but for the something. Echo Watch, they've got the Echo Show, so the Echo Watch, you know, yeah. sort of kind of goes with that. And I think it's the only thing that doesn't have the A Lady in it, right? I mean, every or, single, I, my cup or, has has a lady in it. I'm almost positive. <laughs> there are definitely watches that don't have the word watch in them. I wonder if the Echo Watch could be called the Echo something else because I think Echo yeah. is probably right. What the, if they made okay, a it watch doesn't have to be the, called watch? The Echo, Echo wear. wrist. Yeah, yeah. Echo, Echo wrist wear. is good. Or if they made one just for ladies, just call it the Echo Lady. I like it. The, the Echo e Band. The e lady. <laughs> Echo Band. I liked the Microsoft Band. I missed that. <laughs> Echo Band. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but it didn't do so well, so maybe that would be a bad name. But uh, yeah, I'm not hard over on the name, but a watch from Amazon with A-Lady well, built in. You you said originally a wearable, and I think that's a smarter way to phrase it. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, it was a wearable. It could, might not be I a watch. Meant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, what's All your right. number two? Can't have Allison here without an Apple prediction. I predict that Apple's going to come out with a new health feature on the Apple Watch. So I want to I want to bracket how cool it's going to be. It's not going to be as amazing as being able to do blood sugar, which is what we want it all to do, but more useful than like the decibel measurement. So maybe something more in the in the vein of the heart rate monitoring that that's gotten us the uh, uh, ability to look for atrial fibrillation. Something something in that kind of vein. That that cool of a well pun Wait a intended. You're, you're just predicting Apple. Will come out with a cool new health feature <laughs> but but better than better than decibel measurement that's a health feature right i think come i on, think better we, than that. I, I think uh i'll be alex we, we need something more specific uh oh at least a um, category okay 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 here you go uh epilepsy oh okay oh, well, all right that's, that's, good that's, one. Specific that's good specific enough for you yeah yeah, yeah all right like like yeah, I, 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 yeah, that blood I, sugar would be really good. Um, that's well, yeah. a thing I've had to face recently, and I would love it if my watch would go your AC one's up or whatever it's called, and your uh, put that drink down or whatever. I'd like, I, I want to know when it's spiking and when it's not, and what's spiking it without af having to actually draw blood. I mean, I don't know how it would do it. So this is all up in the air, but yes. Supposedly please. they're working on it. Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. think they're going to come out with that in 2020, but uh, obviously that's where they're trying to go. You don't want to oh, watch yes. right now that you put it on and you go, ow, because it keeps poking you. <laughs> seizure, seizure prediction and detection. I, I think that's a that's a very probable one uh, that they could have. All right. All right. Uh, did, did you have accepted. a quick third one as well? Well, I have one. You know, I got to make sure I get a point for sure. I predict that there'll be a conversation on DTNS <laughs> why you got, where you guys are talking about how VR is not really taking off. And a guest will or host will say, yeah, but VR is in its early days. 
So Roger, edit that out of all of our episodes for the coming year. <laughs> well, I just laughed. I heard I heard uh, Patrick say it last week, and I just could not stop laughing. Especially since almost all of you had a VR or AR prediction. Somebody's going to still say that. Uh, well, I can get a guest who can say that. <laughs> Roger's like, uh, for the right incentive, we can make this happen, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, but, you know, VR is in its early days. Uh, uh, and it will yeah, be yeah. until the day that it's suddenly not in its early days. <laughs> I believe there's that video we found in the 1980s where somebody said that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> early days can last a long time, you know, uh, on a geologic <laughs> <Yeah>. time scale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I have uh, two predictions. I was going to make a third prediction about uh, encryption and reg tech. Reg tech is where you're like uh, engineering your tech for regulations and how reg tech and encryption, the regulation tech would cause companies to take encryption more seriously, but I couldn't think of any measurement for it. So I'm just kind of throwing that one out there. Uh, keep an eye out for reg tech. It's going to be a good big buzzword in 2020. But here's one I think is a, is a little more measurable. The There will become, in 2020, a push, and this could be from nonprofits, it could be uh, a push for legislation from, from someone within a government, for limits on data science. For instance, the GDPR is about data collection. It says you can't collect this data without having this permission, and you can only store it for this long. But it doesn't say anything about data processing. It doesn't say anything about what you do with the data you legitimately collected and what you can do to it. So data processing, profiling, model transparency. There is nothing that holds data scientists accountable for the consequences of their work. So I think the logical next step is for people to start pushing for, okay, we've we've limited how they can collect data on us, but even when they have our data, we don't like what they're doing with it. We don't like how what they're finding out and we want to we want to have rules about what they can find out even with the data they legitimately collected about us. This is interesting. And it kind of reminds me of the like moral code that doctors and nurses have. It, and it's mm. almost setting like scientists to that same kind of level. First, process no harmful data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do no harm. <laughs> yeah. A new uh, like it. Well, and it, it just seems like the natural outgrowth of, of people complaining like, but they're collecting all this data and they shouldn't. Now settling down and going, well, we haven't totally fixed that problem, but it's not as bad as it was. But I, I now see that this company is taking the data that I allowed them to have to, to make it easier for me to log in and do things. And and they're making all this money uh, selling it to insurance companies. Uh, and, and it's legal and it's not uh, reducing my privacy, but I don't like that. I don't want my data to support that. It's a, it's it, that kind of attitude I think might be part of this. Where do you want, where do you want enforcement to come from on that? Do you want that to be a regulatory thing? Do you want the, this? Well, I don't want anything. Here? I'm just predicting. It's gonna <laughs> <laughs> what are you calling though? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm saying that the push will begin. I'm not sure we'll get legislation in 2020, but we'll start to see, you know, the EU committees formed and drafting the idea and the calls for comment come out or maybe like, you know, a, a public knowledge puts out a position paper that says we need to have a law on data processing. Here's what it could look like that. That's the kind of thing I expect to see in this coming year. Nice. Yeah, All right. I'm on board. Now that one's kind of high concept. It's uh, it's it's sort of a social trends prediction. My second one is very specific. Uh, well, <laughs> it could be more specific, but it's pretty specific. Apple's going to buy a streaming video service. Oh, mm. and everybody thinks it's going to be Netflix. It's not going to be Netflix. Netflix doesn't want to sell. Apple doesn't like to spend that much money on things. They like to buy something that's undervalued. They like to buy something where the people have expertise and they can get it for cheap. And so when I say a streaming video service, I don't mean Hulu, Netflix, those kind of things. I mean one of those services that does live television that's struggling. So Philo, uh, Fubo, uh, some, someone suggested maybe DAZN, uh, D-A-Z-N, uh, and Fubo and DAZN are both sports-oriented ones. The idea here would be for Apple to provide live programming in Apple TV Plus. 
So I thought you made all those names up. Those are actual. <laughs> Did you just go like start should, three I little companies? Should have thrown the fake one in to see if you could spot it. Yeah. <laughs> Philo, Diplo, Fubo. Yeah, well, one of those is a DJ. I mean, is there I mean, a limit by like how big this company has to be for it to count in your prediction? Like it's it's a guy in his garage. I mean, if Apple <laughs> buys it, no, it doesn't. It, there's no limit on that. I mean, um, I. Mean, I, I Okay. I know that this is only part of your project prediction, but I think the the idea that Apple would like to be the source of your live TV programming is a really good one. Mm -hmm. I I and this is not in the category really that you're going in, Tom, but something like Plex, where you can you know increasingly mm -hmm. be able to digest original programming, get live television in certain cases if you can if you can configure your media server a certain way. If Apple could somehow take that over because that product is so good already. I'm a Plex user, so I'm biased, of course, but uh, but uh, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And no, it's not going to be Netflix or Disney Plus. No, none of the big ones, <laughs> but it's, no. it's interesting because, I mean, they, they have precedence for this in the music side. I mean, they bought Beats and then they Beats, bought Beats got right. rolled in. Yeah, so it makes sense. But the, the one big thing I would have a question about is the the value of buying them would be what for the content they already have that's original, do you think? Otherwise, it would, it's just, you know. Well, uh, Beats is a good example. When they bought Beats, obviously they got the headphones part of it, but the music service had the relationships with the labels. And they were able to take that and leverage it into Apple Music super fast. Mm. And they had some of the technology about how discovery and playlist management and all of that. So I think what they'd be looking for is people who have the expertise to stream live video reliably. Uh, and make sure that it's accessible and some of those relationships with live video providers that come along with it. Yeah, see that would in be in the middle of this you said you said live. Do you do you mean only live video streaming services or any video streaming service? I mean live video streaming services like linear cable like. Uh, so YouTube TV, Sling TV, those are examples of what I mean. Doesn't mean that okay. everything streamed on it is always live. It just means that there, there's live a live stream of video versus Netflix where you have a bunch of on-demand stuff. Okay, so that if said, they buy Netflix, I, you don't win. Yeah, right. If they buy Netflix, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm wrong. Okay. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Okay, uh, getting the I, I think they want to buy a live streaming video service, and I think they want to do that because they want to focus on live events, award shows, sports, etc., and I have been looking at this name for that whole segment, and I had no idea that was pronounced The Zone. I would like to thank a Canadian <laughs> listener who pointed out when I was saying Dazen uh, and is a subscriber to The Zone in Canada, where it is apparently much better than it is here in the U.S. for yeah, helping it's you to know. Yeah, it's on my PlayStation dashboard. I've never actually uh -huh. clicked it because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and now there's I know a, what it's a called. a bunch of great least. sports on there. I think there's AHL on there. Hmm. Oh, that would make sense. I have Game Center, so I have all that hockey stuff anyway <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah so uh there you go apple this would be a good this would, this would be a good solution tom for your the loss of your great playstation view uh love that you had you enjoyed you know that what? i replaced that i i'm no longer a playstation view subscriber even though they still have a month left uh, i replaced it with hulu and i'm quite happy oh well there you go so maybe you're you're good uh, maybe Hulu, maybe Disney and their investment in Hulu is just like, ah, oh, that thing's a pain. Disney Plus is our focus now, you guys. Let's sell Hulu off to Apple. I don't, I don't see that happening. Not when they have so much invested in Hulu through yeah. the Fox stuff, and and they have Bam Tech. Remember, they they have the technology to provide the streaming backend. Uh, a cor correlated prediction to this could be that Apple buys some streaming video company. I'm not making that prediction though. What I want to go. Bought what if they bought HBO Max? Because they do have a record of working with Warner Brothers on the HBO launch, on, on streaming. I'm just saying. No, because AT&T feels like HBO Max is the pinnacle of Warner Media, which is the future of its whole company. So I don't see AT&T selling that. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. How do we feel about 2020? Going to be the best year yet. Yep. I, I yeah. see it with full focus vision. 2020 vision, you might say. Self-driving well, cars, it's going to be awesome. All kidding aside, <laughs> there are so year. many things that have been promised for 2020. And I'm going back to like in 2017, when you hear 2020, you're like, oh, well, you know, maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't. That's so far <laughs> away. It's like tomorrow. 
now we're now we're really going to see, you know, if 2020 is this 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 transitional year that that was promised, you know, in the last five years. Yeah. I still want my that, flying cars. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Sam, where are they? I, I, I thought it was interesting that none of us had the like way out there. Usually there's a prediction that's like, this is probably too far down the road, but you know, robots will fix my breakfast. And we didn't get any of those this time. <laughs> We're being I think such realists this we've time. We've been burned. I know. By <laughs> previous predictions. Right? I'm like, I can't We're do that. We're trying to be Allison. Happen. That's right. That's right. We're all chasing Allison's dream. Of the, yeah, I the, noticed the, the rules on me are pretty tight now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ganged up on you. I'm sorry about that. That's a, you know, if you come at the king, you best win. So uh, Alice is probably going to win, going to, going to beat us all again. Hey, thank you guys uh, for, for all hanging out with us uh, today. And uh, thank you to our guest, Scott Johnson. Where can people find more of what you'll be doing in 2020? Well, uh, presumably I'll continue to be doing a lot of it over at frogpants.com. So you can check that out. Podcasts, art, all kinds of cool stuff happening. So check that out. Um, and you can always follow me on Twitter at Scott Johnson. And thanks for having us. Happy New Year, Tom. Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to you, Jen Cutter. Where can people find more of what you do? Oh. Jen Muter. I think oh, Jen, Jen, Jen got Jen. muted somehow. Uh, I don't <laughs> I don't know how, but she is she is trying to tell us what's happening there. I think you're unmuted now, Jen. All right, that may have been my fault. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, Jen Cutter would be the place to find me. And uh, also at Jen Cutter uh, on Twitter and Instagram, because I'm starting a new job in January and I can't oh, wait to talk about it. Oh, that's boy. fantastic. Can't Yay. wait to hear about it. Hey, Shannon Morris, what are you going to be doing in 2020? Uh, oh, lots of stuff that I can't quite talk about yet, but I'm very, Everybody very says. excited to announce as well. <laughs> Me and Jen are in the same boat, it seems. Um, well, youtube.com slash Shannon Morse. I'm actually going to be at CES next week, and I am so, so excited. I'm going to be announcing a ton of videos. I'm also going to be working on some giveaways this month. Hopefully that all works out. So definitely subscribe if you're interested in tech reviews and everything from the show floor as well as, as usual, ThreatWire over at snubsy.com slash ThreatWire or youtube.com slash HAK5 as well, where you can learn all about security and privacy, everything you need to know, and probably too much of it. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> never too much. It's never too much. There's also <laughs> never too much of podfeet.com, Allison. Is that, that where people should go to find your stuff? That is the best place to find podcasts uh, with the a Technology Geek podcast with an ever so slight Apple bias, in case you haven't picked up on that a little bit. And you can follow me on Twitter. Absolutely do it, folks. Podfeet.com. Uh, Sarah, that's it. We did it. We made the predictions. We've spoiled 2020. We did. Well, I mean, we made the predictions. It's sort of like the Seinfeld episode. Can we hold the predictions? Because <laughs> that is the essence of the right. prediction. Right. But uh, but yeah, yeah. No, this was this was fun. We uh, we wrapped up our predictions from last year with very mixed results. Of course, Allison's the best. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but uh, but no, it it uh, it has been a good year. It has been a, a tech heavy year, and I expect nothing less from our next year as well. Well, uh, thanks to everyone for supporting the show. Uh, as we say, we cannot do it without you. You make this year possible. One of the reasons we we want to record these special holiday episodes is to thank you for all you do to keep the show going. Uh, that's it for Daily Tech News Show 2019. We have a special Best of Good Day Internet episode tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you again next year, January 2nd. Next decade. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Start January 2nd. We'll be back live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2130 UTC at our website, dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Happy New Year. Happy New Woo! Year. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>